I love being in a room like this. Wow, the power, the professionalism of all these accomplished women. I want to uh, say that you have a, a fantastic panel ahead of you. You know, the finance industry is not exactly at the forefront of uh, female representation. So Catalyst says that uh, among mid-managers in finance, 46% are women. Among senior managers in finance, 29% are women. And guess what percent of CEOs in finance are women? No, 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 there are women here. I mean, they've got to be more than zero. Well, that's a um, large number. But we've probably <laughs> captured half of the universe right here, or more than half. There's one other person who's actually on our board, is Joan Payton, who's yes. a great institution um, here. But we, we have, yeah, we've captured the universe. It's actually 2%. <laughs> I think we have a lot of accomplished women in the room, um, it, but I, I feel like there's that uh, everyone faces in so many problems, the last mile problem or the glass ceiling or whatever you want to call it. I just wanted you guys to maybe comment on you know, what to do to get to the last level. I think once you come and get your MBA or you're out and you're an MD or wherever you are, you're almost there. How do you get to the next level? Keep pushing. That's, that's what I found. When I was in the high-tech world, um, my, my boss, the treasurer, came to me and she said, I am going to make you aggressive. And I'm looking at her saying, I'm not an aggressive person. She said, obviously, that's why I'm going to make you aggressive. And she, it was interesting because she had quite the reputation being in a man's high-tech world in the 90s and 80s. Um, interestingly, she came from a ranching family where the women were the foremen. And so that she'd gotten the practical application of how to work in that kind of environment. So her advice would be smash any ceiling you come up against. Mm -hmm. And that's basically my attitude is I have literally very few times felt like there was a ceiling that I had to crash through up, but I never hesitated when it was there. And um, some of the ceilings that I felt were subtle and some weren't. Um, one of them, which was surprising, a few of my clients told me that they had heard that I was their founders, our founder's daughter. Ah. Oh my goodness, you know, that, talking about setting you back, um, mentally thinking, no, I didn't get here for that reason. I got here because I learned everything about the business, I learned how the decisions were made, I got the trust of the people that I work with, and grab the opportunity. And so it, it was one of those situations where you do whatever it takes to get to that next level, but don't settle for anything less than the level you want to strive for. So I guess we can turn a little bit, um, and I'll let you decide what you want to answer, and maybe we can start with you. Uh, Sarah, for this one, um, if you want to tell us, you know, kind of about any important outside interests, we heard about um, Olympics and <laughs> and world travel that have been influential, or um, something about the um, current economic landscape and things that your team is thinking about, or things that clients are asking about. Well, there, I think two questions are very quickly outside interests. I always want to know what my clients are thinking, and they're never going to tell me exactly. So if you can get on the um, some sort of charitable board or in some way be on a finance committee, one of these boards, and then evaluate m investment managers, try to reverse those roles. You will find that is incredibly interesting and insightful. Mm -hmm. You get to work with talented consultants or an outsourced CIO. and meet managers and it adds that perspective. Over time we tend to get narrower and narrower and the head buried in the sand. So I would encourage you, if you can do something charitable, really get involved and then make it uh, synergistic with your work. So that every, that, cause every, I'm sure you all have the same issue, like every time you're not working or if you're not with family, there's a giant opportunity cost. So make sure it's something that's really productive. I just want, I had a question as far as when you, go, looking back at your career, did you have a, a mentor that stood out in your life? And if so, was it a man or was it a woman? I've had four, real, three academics and one business person who have been huge man, mentors to me, been very nice to me. And 
Um, they're Alban guys. And, but we're all sort of of a generation where there really weren't a lot of women in front of us. Mm -hmm. And again, that's why I worry about the pipeline issue is that if we don't keep growing people in asset management, and that's why I'm so excited about, we're all so excited about when because it's so easy to reverse the gains and then you're reliving I mean, it's just like the generation that came in front of us paid a very steep price that allowed us to climb where we are. It's just, we've got to keep moving. So I was just wondering, as you're all speaking, that I, your executives and um, as far as you've come in your career, you've had to make so many decisions. And every day you're bombarded with, um, you know, really minor decisions that could affect the company. And how, how do you take all this information and decide that something needs to be um, spent more time on. Like, what's the toughest decision that you've had to make in business, and how do you, did you come to that decision? One is, you know, joining a firm that was started by an entrepreneur, and recognizing when we were at a growth inflection point, and what it would take to get to the next level and going through that buyout activity. That was the hardest thing, I would say. Just because it, um, with entrepreneurial firms, it's easy to just go along with that path, and then when the entrepreneur is lo no longer interested or wants to sell, then sometimes the, the firm doesn't become what it could uh, under a different management structure. So that was a very, very difficult um, decision but the right decision. Active mentoring is something that I think is really critical and not just the mentoring programs that are written up that people follow and say okay I need to meet with this person four times a year this is what we need to talk about but finding real situations to mentor folks on the job. The, the thing that was really shocking to me this year is I actually had an employee who's also a female who's also very accomplished come up to me and say you know what, you intimidate me. Wow. And I thought, oh my goodness, what in the heck is going on here? Because one of the things that I really pride myself on is being very approachable. So that taught me what I need to do is not assume that people know I'm approachable, just make it happen. Just do the act of re outreach to make sure that they know that. What is kind of something that you're conscious of in your day to day or a principle that you live by to lead and to inspire people to follow you, and not like literally follow you, but <laughs> want to work for you and want to engage with you and want to be supportive of you and partner with you? I can't ask people to do something I won't do. Yeah. That's the number one. And uh, if I haven't been on a research trip or I haven't actually looked at the presentation and thought about it carefully and responded with some questions, then how can I ask them to put in the hours and the time and the thought so if you're going to lead, you have to lead by example. Just wanted to say a quick thank you to all of you, to Sarah, Jane, <laughs> Becky, and Andrea.